three, two, one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Today is October 2nd, 2020. It is a Friday evening here in El Paso, Texas. It is approximately 525 in the evening. As always, uh, co-host of the podcast, Mr. Misa is here with you, us. You, Say what's you. up, Misa. What it do, what it do, what it do. All up. And for today's episode, guys, we have a new producer to the podcast. He's filling in for Lena, the producer, who's out with her friend right now. Uh, his name is Nick. He's friend of the podcast. He's been on a few times. Nick, say what's up. Hey, what's going on, family? Hey, hey, Lena's not in the safari this time? <clears throat> She's not in the safari this time. She's uh, just on the east side with her friends. But, you know, maybe yeah. next time she'll be in a safari or, or something. And for episode 45 of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast, we have a very special guest with us. Mr. Chuck DeBroder is here with those guys. Say what's up, Chuck. Hey, what is up, Chris and Misa and Nick and everybody Ooh, in the house? Chuck, What Chuck, is going on? Chuck, how are you, Chuck? I am most awesome. I am excellent. Uh, boy, 100% uh, ready to go. I've been psyched and looking forward to talking to y'all. And we've been working it out. Got the schedule opened up and we're here. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, a while back, a few months ago, I was talking to Chris and we we're trying to think like, who, who can we have here that, that most people know? And, and I just was like, dude, what about Chuck? And Chris was like, you know what? Just shoot your shot, you know, shoot your shot. Yeah. 2020. And, um, <laughs> 20. <laughs> thanks, thanks to Chris. Thanks to Chuck to even answering back. Oh, man. Yeah. We appreciate yeah, man. it. And I got to say real quick, Chuck, you look, you look thinner, man. You're looking good. You're yeah. Looking I've up. lost 22 pounds and, uh, I discovered some tweaks, some secrets to losing weight that, you know, I lost 48 pounds in three and a half years, which is good. But I was busting hump in the gym. I was uh, eating five times a day. Trainers say eat oh, five God. times a day. Well, if you eat five times a day, you're putting in more calories, oh, yeah. you know? So, but, you know, they want to keep your business, keep you coming back yeah. like the hospitals, right? Yeah. And the doctors. <laughs> so, keep um, them sick. So keep them sick, back. yeah. So, um, anyway. But yeah, then all of a sudden in six months, I've lost 22 pounds. So I am, gosh, do the math. I am 70 pounds lighter than I was uh, three and a half years ago. Stress-free and uh, much what's, happier, healthier. What's your secret, Chuck? I need to know. I need to okay. write this shit down right okay. now. Okay. Well, um, Nick, write this shit down, all right? Chef Rosario and my wife, she is a, a professional chef, pastry chef. She has cooking with Rosario every oh, Wednesday, Wednesday at 11 a.m. with Rosana Diaz from Televisa Juarez. And they're live on AM 1420. Act, act, kick. Mm. Active a radio. Oh, did you see oh, that? I did. That was delicious. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I, I, I'm at work during that time, but I, I make sure I'm, I'm in my break room at 11. Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> Yeah, but then it just makes you hungry. Oh, yeah, it does, which is okay because, I, you know, I get out by noon. So okay, good. I give my wife ideas good, you know, after good. watching. But yeah, show. but she jump started my whole thing with cucumber, green apple, and lemon juice. And that's part of the recipes. And um, I've been a hypnotist for 15 years, too. That's my second passion wow. is the power yeah. of the mind. And know. I've got a client up in the Pacific Northwest. She actually is originally from here. And in two weeks, she's lost six pounds with my recorded hypnosis session. I did a session with Mike McKay, who's been uh, a DJ here with the Fox. Uh, he was on WABC in New York, uh, Detroit. He did uh, the Geico mo motorcycle commercial voiceover. Oh, dude, he I did uh, how to train your dragon toy commercial wow. and Hasbro Star Wars toys commercial. Anyway, he's a massive voiceover guy and he's retired. He lives up the street here. And I went there and I, I, I laid down some binary beats uh, underneath my voice, which drop you from alpha, the awake state to beta, the for, or excuse me, beta, the awake state to alpha, the first level of hypnosis to theta and delta. And so um, I, I sent that to her. And so I help people lose weight. And now I figured I'm not an expert, but I tell people what I did. So that's actually, a, that's pretty interesting. And that's, that's amazing. Would you, would you try that out, Chris? <laughs> yeah, probably, dude. I, I could probably use a few pounds. Like, 
you know what I mean? Like, uh, not to, <laughs> you know, I'm not shy about my weight or anything, but you know, that sounds pretty good. If I can lose six pounds in two yeah, days. Yeah. It's drinking the juice. And then I, <laughs> I eat one full meal a day completely with dessert with the trace leches with Sign me uh, up. Flan, Sign me up. Everything. I'm ready. Sign and me up. And then uh, it's just what you eat afterwards. So we'll right. talk more about that. But <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. yeah I'll, I'll hook you up. We'll we'll uh, we'll do this. We'll lose some pounds on this podcast. So it's like a like a psychological <laughs> kind of aspect. Right? It is. You know, it's all your self image. Anything. It takes 28 days to develop a habit. Some people say 21, but 28 days is the lunar cycle. So you do anything good or bad for 28 days, you're going to develop a habit, right? right. And your conscious mind is like the bodyguard. It says, hey, Chuck needs to smoke to be Chuck. So we're going to make it easy for him to have the money to buy cigarettes, to go smoke and all that. But if we can send the bouncer, the bodyguard on a break and talk to your alpha and your theta and talk to just your subconscious mind, your fantasy world, then all of a sudden I can put thoughts of your black tar filled lungs, uh, you know, the taste of a cigarette and all that in your mouth. And I put all the emotions in there. And the next time you touch a cigarette, you're like, oh, nah. And you, you put it down, right? Or the next time you want Whataburger. Or, yeah, or cheeseburger. Whataburger. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and actually, it, I can eat a Whataburger. But here's the thing. At first, you throw away the non-condiment bun. Whatever's not uh, seasoned there, you toss that to the birds, toss the sandwich, uh, bottom layer out, and you just eat the, the hamburger like that. Now, poor girl, last time I was at Waterburger, I said, could I have a, le <laughs> a lettuce a wrap? And she uh, didn't speak English too well. And so she gave me a hamburger with shredded lettuce around the burger, around the patty. It was a little hard to eat, but uh, <laughs> how did that even stick together? It was, it was tough. At least she was uh, very nice enough to accommodate you. Yeah, she stuff. was like, oh, see, si, yeah. si. Yeah. Hey, Lechuga. Shop it up. <laughs> so Lechuga. first off, Chuck, before we really dive into this podcast, because we're going to get into a lot of things. We have a lot of things to talk about. Sure. Uh, you've been a prominent El Paso weatherman for years. Uh, now you've transitioned into social media and trying to build your brand and, and get your exposure that way. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into all that. Sure. Um, but first off, I just want to thank you for being on here today. So thank round you. of applause for thank Chuck. You. Thank you. All right, boy, the... The audience and their social distancing too, which is yeah. so important. A lot of wearing masks. We're actually doing seven feet apart. Okay. Not six. Seven. We're okay. taking an extra foot. So uh -huh. precaution. So like I said, we want to thank you. We understand how busy your schedule is and we just want to thank you for taking your time and joining us here today. Um, so before we kick off this podcast, guys, you guys already know we have a tradition unlike any other. We have to crack open our celebratory beer. And I've got, I've got water here. And Chuck is, yes. Chuck yeah. is drunk on H2O, H2O guys. Yeah, I'm um, drunk go. on water. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the beer is popped. I'm going to take a drink. And oh, this podcast go. is official. Cheers. 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 So, Chuck, it's hard for me to say this, but for the people who do not know who you are, because mostly everybody I know, everybody knows Chuck. and probably the only people who really wouldn't know who you are are people who are real young right now. But for the most part, most people growing up in El Paso, you recognize Mr. Chuck. Um, he's, like I said, he's a local weatherman here, or he was a local weatherman here for a long still time. Is, still is. Still Just is. different media. But yeah. different media. But he was that guy you would see all the time. Um, so for Chuck, for the people who don't know you, can you get, kind of just give us a little bit about who you are as a person? And then uh, kind of where you grew up, because I know you're not from El Paso. You're from Colorado, correct? Originally, yeah. Um, born in Porter Memorial Hospital. And uh, the day after I was born, they stopped delivering babies. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if that was a correlation there. Like some weather but, um, uh, but now they're delivering babies again. It's been a long enough time. They're like, hey, we'll chance it again. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, um, on a winter day, January 17th, and, and um, you know, uh, my TV station, one general manager told me, Chuck, we made Chuck DeBroto. I go, no. My mom and dad did on a cold winter night at, <laughs> at Loveland, Loveland Ski Resort. And okay. uh, there you go. But um, yeah, I grew up in Arvada, Colorado, which is now one of the most desirable places in Denver to live. Uh, my parents bought our duplex for 28 grand. It's now, if they, they said if we get a separate water meter, it's worth $750,000. <laughs> 
uh, the marijuanification of Denver <laughs> is what I call it. I mean, God bless. Now you can't even find a half a million dollar <laughs> fixer upper in Denver. And uh, if you do, you're going to get more than a half a million and they're going to knock it down and probably build a high yeah. rise. And now Denver's finally getting smart and making them put parking garages in there because there's no parking like Denver. most big cities, you know. Uh, but anyway, I grew up there. I loved to talk. And this was in one of my bio, bios once, but a kindergarten teacher discovered my talent for talking. And I talked at the wrong time, of course, you know, all, <laughs> all class. And she was like, Chuck, come here. She put me in an empty classroom and got one of those Fisher Price kind of karaoke microphone little radios and said, Chuck, pretend you're on the radio. I said, cool. So I was in the room. She came back over an hour later. I was still talking. Oh, and God. she knew I was destined <laughs> for a career. In you know radio. what? Now that you say that, maybe uh -huh. my, my, my son, I got a four-year-old. That mm -hmm. dude won't stop talking. Maybe I should get him into that. Train him, man. Train, train yeah. him. Start him now, dude. That way, mm -hmm. like, um, because, you know, when you're growing up, some people are like, I'm afraid, like, to be in front of people. I'm mm -hmm. afraid to get up in front of the class and give a speech or whatever. Like, I think if you start them young, dude, that fear, you'll just coach it right out of them. And then they become not to the point where, not only are they comfortable talking or being on mic or on screen uh, where they actually like and enjoy it. And then they like, they, they try to figure out how can I do this as a career? You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. That's how it was with me. My grandma, my, uh, she, grandma she, was German, German. Yeah. She's in Deutsch. Ich habe zwei Jahre auf der Hochschule studiert. Ich habe zwei Jahre auf der Universität. Aber ich sprach, like uh, uh, ja, ich sprach uh, deutsches Bier, deutsches <laughs> hey, Nick, can yeah. you translate for yeah. us real quick? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, but I learned actually two years in high school, I said, and two years in college, but um, my grandma was German, she was blunt, and she was like, you're going to sing. The, we, want you, we want to hear you sing. And I would stand up in front of all the family, relatives, neighbors, and, and I learned at a young age, hey, it's no big deal. You know, even if you mess up, it's fine, man. Right. It's okay. And that's what people don't realize in life. Mess up. If you're going to mess up, mess up big, yeah. man. And then you learn the next time. Makes and, you better. Uh, yeah, it makes you, you better. You know, um, it's imperfect action, you know. Um, and you keep on getting in until you fix each little thing. So I learned that at an early age. So you're right on with that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a 14 millimeter overbite. I used to say, uh, Gail and Wabbit instead of <laughs> Rabbit. Um, and I, I went to a speech therapist and I wish she could have seen me on TV because she would have been like freaked out. But at the age, uh, I had third grade all the way up through, gosh, junior high, oh, for, wow. you know, speech therapist, maybe seventh grade. I'd, I'd still occasionally have to go. And, um, and now look at you, like now everybody like yeah. knows your, 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 your voice. Yeah. And uh, I've, done vo I've done voiceovers. I've, I've been an actor, been in a few movies in the last uh, year, year and a half. And, uh, Crystal Poppins, Miss Poppin video. Oh, I, I wait a little bit. Uh, you were in that? Yeah, okay. man. I know Crystal Poppin. Yeah. Yeah. She's a, uh, she, she's, a, she's amazing, dude. I, I really yeah. like her. It's, I'm glad to see the way that her career is going. Um, because I like back in the day, I tried to be like a little rapper. Mm -hmm. And so I started locally little, with my friend, little, little rapper. rapper. Cause <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know because like, I didn't think hey, that seriously, but, but you know what, you know, I tried and the, uh, the word flow and a guy by the name of Spoonie beach out of Oakland was on my radio station in Pueblo, Colorado. And he taught me how to flow and I oh, could, wow. I could <laughs> think ahead go. And so and that's part of that's yeah, talent, you right? know, part of it. That's, and that's so, talent. you know, um, I can, you know, I used to freestyle over there at the prickly and <laughs> the, the freestyle, my, my freestyle and freestyle, uh, I get a little bilingual and angry in my, uh, uh, freestyle, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> but no, it's, it's an art, you know, it's yeah. poetry. That's and so, good. you know, yeah. and, and then what I was saying with, the with Christelle Poppin, uh, we did a show back in the day at Frankie's East, the bowling alley. And it was like a showcase. So she won the showcase. And after that, like her career is just projected oh, no and projected. Way. So it's kind of cool. That's awesome. And, yeah. and now Mr. Chuck here was in her video. So it's Yay. all just a yeah. circle again. And ran into uh, Miss Poppins' mom over at uh, Albertsons by University there. And uh, 
And she goes, I'm Crystal's mom. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So I haven't yet told her that I ran into your mom, um, you know. And uh, she went to Austin High. And uh, a few of my friends that went to high school with her knew her. And, yeah, I'm just so happy. And she co-wrapped a little University of Texas song for the season. Oh, yeah. ESPN. Yeah. For the Texas games that's that awesome. they're showing. That's dope. They're yeah. going to have her voice. And it's just like two lines maybe two three lines for each and they got some old school houston rapper who actually is pretty darn good uh and their voices mesh really well so it so, sounds good hey, yeah you know what i just got a perfect idea nick mm-hmm. what do you think about this chuck and chris put out an album <laughs> hey there we go <laughs> right there dude an ep right right. Uh-huh. The, chris, the chris and chuck mixtape yeah. hey <laughs> there you go yeah yeah i used to Tell everybody, you know, this was my gang here, you know, <laughs> West Side Nine. You know, <laughs> back in the day, you know, I'll, I'll jump in later. But, uh. So uh, how did you um, like, so you went to, did you go to Texas Tech for school? I did actually take one class there, but I was on uh, at KCBD News Channel 11 with John Robinson and Abner Uresti and Karen McKay. Abner, Latino. Mexa and Karen Litter are still co-anchors and they've been co-anchors for like 50 years, like yeah. the longest in the country. And their ratings are still killer. Amazing. People still watch local TV in Lubbock. But if you lived in Lubbock or been there, especially if there's no college in session, there's not much yeah, to there's do. There's not much uh, going on. No. You can, somebody told me before I moved there, you can do everything there is to do in Lubbock three times in six months, you know, and I'm like, Oh, okay. Um, but I love Lubbock and I love guns up Texas tech. No, don't get me wrong. All the people were nice. They even had some old oil money and stuff. There was like a little, uh, real rich area there. Yeah. I got to see big bands, um, uh, right. Th- just a half a block from my house, um, in a little warehouse. And these touring bands would go there like, uh, gosh, uh, Smashing Pumpkins and, hey, and uh, uh, you know, uh, a band that I really liked from Colorado called Big Head Todd and the Monsters. And then there was uh, uh, Jack Russell of uh, Rock Me, Rock Me Now. There was a, um, a top 40 heavy metal band we saw there. And some other, just like, it was cool just because yeah. it was a small town, but, you know, played a little bigger because of the college. Yeah, that's but my... I, uh, my uh, my brother went to Texas Tech. He graduated for uh, with his law degree from there. So I've been to Lubbock one time, and it was to go to his graduation. And we saw like these richer areas where they have like huge houses, like ridiculous Hollywood, estates. Yeah. yeah, like Hollywood status. And like you said, Lubbock, not a lot going on, especially if there's no university Texas Tech football game. Um, it's not. It's kind. Of, it, it is a college town, but um, it's cool because like I know like being in an environment like that, that's where you get like the chance to have like a place where you get all these cool concerts and things that you guys get to go and enjoy and experience. So mm-hmm. that's cool. I, I mean, I, I rather, I take El Paso over Lubbock, but you know, Lubbock's. Yeah. Right. And that's where I started and they paid me. Well, here I got my first degree uh, at university of Southern Colorado, which is now CSU Pueblo. It's kind of like the UTEP of Colorado. Okay. And uh, they've got great sports teams. Always Are have. they 3-0 and right now? Uh, I believe so. I don't know. I was going to say, if they're anything like UTEP, the, their sports programs are not the best. Well, they're 3-1 right now? Yeah. Well, three for once, one. they've been playing high school teams. And yeah. Teams. Yeah. And community colleges. Yeah. Don't, don't forget that. <laughs> I see. Um, it doesn't but, count. <laughs> but anyway. Um, they played Texas and yeah, I ran out actually, of the Actually, CSU Pueblo three years ago? took the national championship in their like division one or two Whatever or division one. Uh, yeah like a juco um, team kind of like. yeah well they're yeah not even division one maybe it, like division two, two like oh, somewhere yeah. like mary harden baylor yeah. like a little school okay. like that. yeah but I mean. they're, they're they're pretty big but anyway uh radio tv broadcasting npr i got a silver mic award as a freshman first freshman only freshman to do that at the college radio station that was cool and and uh how was that experience? Was that was your first time doing radio? Yeah, right out of the bat. And I ended up being news director as a freshman of this radio station. And, you're born with and, that. Uh, it's your grandma, your, your, you, your, your German grandma. <laughs> yeah, you, go I did, yeah, go, go. <laughs> and uh, Max Schnell. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so um, she, you know, I, I did that and it was minimum wage to do radio. I said, dude, I can't pay my student loans or anything on minimum wage. And that's what it's really gone for TV now. Um, two weather girls ago, we paid minimum wage to the weather girl. Oh, wow. I trained one girl illegally for three months. She got paid zero for three months of training. Jesus. And, but anyway, they do but a lot Why of, is that though? Why, why yeah, is that? I, well, my perspective, I think uh-huh. they love it. I mean, if you love something so much, yeah. you're going to, even well, if you don't get paid. And, and they yeah. do it for the ego and right. for hey to say, hey, I'm on TV. Yeah, I'm on TV. Right. yeah. now, um, do you have any any food I can eat because I can't afford to eat? Right. You yeah. know? But I, I did radio. Um, I went all over driving. I was persistent. I did, you know, I go to these TV stations. They're like, Chuck, you're great. Where do you do weather now? And I'm like, I give the best forecast in the world out of my living room <laughs> in Pueblo, Colorado. You know, and they're like, oh, no, we need somebody with experience. And the same old thing. And well, how do you get experience if no one lets you get a break? So even in Grand Junction, Colorado, the lowest market where you have to pay them to be on TV, I think. That's crazy. You know, um, and. uh, And was there like, um, was there a lot of people that were in that in that field of work? Was there a lot of competition? Not really. Well, there's a lot of competition, not a lot of openings, you know, across the country. Okay. You know, if you think about it, there's like. I don't know, five, 500 TV stations, you know, something yeah. like that. And then obviously and, the goal is you want to get into the biggest market because that's where you're going to make the most money. But you kind of have to start like almost anywhere. Yeah. Like you get your foot but, in the door. But now the, the, you can start in El Paso, Texas. It used to not be the case. You used to have to work somewhere else like I did in Lubbock. And then come over here. And before, but now they'll, you know, hey, you're head cashier at Walmart. Okay, you're, you're on. <laughs> get on the team. And, uh, you're working for free. <laughs> yeah. So, so is that how you, like, how did you get to El Paso? Like, uh, what, like, well, well, obviously it was I, a job opportunity. Um, right? Did you know you about know, El Paso before that? Well, you know, I was hired in Lubbock. I drove there, moved there with my girlfriend. She got a $10,000 signing bonus as a newly graduated nurse. Oh, nice. To move yeah. to Lubbock because hey, they needed nurses. Sugar mama. I'm like, gee, I'm, I'm going to be your agent, you know? <laughs> and so we moved there and the news director was like, I called him and he goes, oh, Chuck, where are you? I go, I'm here in, in Lubbock. I'm ready to work because he, he gave me a, a part-time fill-in. I said, well, that's better than nothing. And I had called the Chili's down there because I had worked five years, three Chili's, two states, and I would kick ass as a waiter in fact we just ate there today <laughs> shout out to yeah. Chili's. I was yeah, say, yeah. this is really good i love that yeah. place and i would go up you know and so i said i could do that and then fill in weather you know and he said well oh, today's my last day i just became uh, lubbock independent <laughs> school district pr man good luck so i kept auditioning and finally the same tv station with the new news director hired me and um I, I had to do two auditions, a live noon audition. And then the main weather guy is like, oh, this guy's being hired to take my job. So he went in to renegotiate his contract. I'm like, dude, I've never even been on TV before. I just, <laughs> I just record the weather guy. I stand next to it on the TV and I pretend I'm doing weather every night. Right. And that's the key is just doing the reps. You do the reps and then People are like, oh, man, you're well, pretty good. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah. you're ready, so they'll plug yeah. you in. So they paid me $8 an hour to do weather in Lubbock, Texas on NBC. And so I had to work at Chili's. What so year was this? This was 1994. There you go. I was three years old. You were three. Four was years old. Yeah. <laughs> you were <laughs> even born. Yeah. 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 born there. Exactly. <laughs> you were still in and, your dad's nuts. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I was not waiting to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing, um, you know, I tell everybody I was 10 years old. I was a child prodigy when I started, but, um, you know, I uh, kept after it and people would be like, Chuck, man, I love your weather. I'd be like, you know, how do you like your fajitas? You know, <laughs> I got to pay my rent <laughs> in college degrees. I'd be like, hey, how about a top shelf margarita or an IBC root beer? How about an awesome blossom? They're like, are you Chuck DeBroder? Yeah. And then they Today's thought weather calls for a nice beer. Yeah, I know exactly. But then they thought it was celebrity waiter night. So they wouldn't tip me. I'm like, no, dude, I need the tips. So they thought oh. you they thought you were there on like behalf of like uh-huh. the TV station kind of doing like a little 
skit or a gig or something. I'm like, no, I'm getting two dollars and fifteen cents an hour. I need every <laughs> every buck I can get. Yeah, hell yeah, that's so, crazy. Anyway, so then uh, Channel Nine here, long, we'll speed it up. Uh, they said, hey, how would you like two and a half times what you're making at both jobs to move to El Paso? I said, I, I've always loved El Paso, and <laughs> hopped in the car and and I had been here. My uncle was in the army for a bit, and um, he, like a lot of people in the army, failure to take orders from people in position of authority. That's actually an <laughs> honorable discharge. Uh, honorable discharge? I believe so. Yeah. You, it's a, yeah. Where you're just you, not, you're not paying attention and you're yeah. not following orders. If that's like not allowed in the army. Yeah. Like, you you got to do that. You got to go along with the flow. <laughs> yeah. But if a army psychiatrist or psychologist says, Hey, no, he really has that type of personality. You can, but anyway, uh, came to Fort, bliss uh he was there for a little while but other than that i drove into town and i fell in love with it you know i love the mexican food i would walk after my 10 o'clock newscast on sundays they they neglected to tell me there was only one weather guy so i had my weekend started after i recorded monday morning's weather all the all the weather cut-ins the today today show cut-ins for monday my Weekend started at 11 p.m. on Sunday nights. And then I would have to go to bed at 9 o'clock on Tuesdays because then the main guy would record Monday night for Tuesday morning. So I would get Monday and Tuesdays off. And then I would have to work the morning show Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I'd have to, when I first got there, I had to get to work at 1245 in the morning. Wow. It, it sucked. I saw people leaving the bars at Cincy and, <laughs> and King's X. I'm like, hey. You're like, I'm on the way to right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, no, you got to do what you love. I love to talk, love weather. And I got a, um, a second degree from Metropolitan State University in meteorology. meteorology. So, um, you know, and it was a lot more difficult than the communications degree in yeah. from CSU Pueblo. But, um, man, I suffered through it. And, you know, I, I drove a... Uh, calculus three tutor. I think he's still in this <laughs> Colorado state mental hospital from uh, attempting to tutor me in, in <laughs> calculus three, physics three. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, what kind of fucking classes do you take to become right. a meteorologist? And it's shit like that. Yeah. Calculus three, physics three, statistics, a course that com uh, combines all, all four with okay. weather. Yeah. And um, that's yeah, crazy. that's really neat. Um, I had always, uh, I, ever since I was little, I'd, I'd always think, you know, seeing the, the, the weather channel and stuff like that, I always think, like, what gets somebody to like the weather so much to, like, get to that point to where, like, they want to be in the news? And and when, while I was looking you up, I, I saw and heard that um, it was your mom. Yeah, your, my mom. Your mom. She still watches every newscast every day, and she doesn't like, and now even the bigger mar markets are getting cheap. So my buddy who's been working at, at CBS forever, who was um, on before me at the sports talk radio in Pueblo that I got a job at, Dave Aguilera, he's uh, been on CBS in Denver for 27 years. And he says, we hire the weekend weather woman of the year. And at the end of the year, if no one recognizes her in a survey, her name, not even one, we fire her and we hire another new pretty much college graduate going into Denver market 17 oh, and they pay them to where they can actually qualify for free government cheese and uh, food stamps. I mean, they don't pay them, You're paying them, nothing. you know, K uh, Kagan Harsha, good guy was my main anchor down here in channel nine for a while. He's up at the WB and Fox affiliate dual. So he means he has to work twice as hard because he has to work for two stations. But um, man, he says, if it wasn't for his, he married a uh, sugar mama's, uh, you know, uh, you it's know, favorite thing. Yeah, she's like an investment uh, counselor and her family's like, own, they're the biggest cattle producer in Montana. Jesus. So yeah. she's anyway, yeah. Yeah. That's so, a sugar anyway, mama right there. But um, yeah, Kagan <laughs> says, man, I would be living in the ghetto if I had to live on what I'm being paid in Denver because of the salaries dropping so much. So, you know, you, you know, I admire all the people that are still in it, but, uh, man, it's so much more rewarding being an entrepreneur. Um, it's a lot more work, a lot more difficult work, but just but it's all worth healthier. It. It's all worth it. Yeah. 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 And, it, and I'm sure for you, you feel like a, like a, a new sense of achievement working for yourself 
instead of working for like a conglomerate media company that's just there. And for a matter of fact, you actually worked at KTSM um, for what, 22 years? 23 years, four months. Oh, yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. What was it? What was that award you won in 1998? Yeah, I saw that you won 1998 Best Meteorologist in the Borderland. I think that was given to you by El Paso Times. El Paso Times, yeah. yeah. Way back in the day. I, I think I was on the front man. cover with an umbrella, you know, something <laughs> cheesy like that. <laughs> Go on. You, know, you, got, you got a copy of that? What? Do you have a copy of that? We got to find a copy. Yeah, we got to find a copy we'll somewhere. We'll post it back I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there's a copy of it somewhere on the internet. Yeah, like, we can find it. And then, man, somebody sent me a newscast where I was skinnier than I am now when I first started at <laughs> weekend weather. And um, I don't even recognize myself. Like, my, head, I, my head was like super skinny. Have and you seen Chris three years ago? Shirt. No, no. Yeah, you, you wouldn't recognize me, trust me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so let's get into your time at KTSM. Obviously, that's where, like, not where you got your notoriety from because you would have gotten that on your own, but that's kind of like where you um, laid your foundation and became known as El Paso's weatherman uh, because of your longevity and just your familiarity with the community and everything uh, with that. So um, how did, like, that happen and then get into kind of, like, the end of the career and you kind of being let go and then uh, the rumors that go with that? Oh, you- yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, first I, I was, I'm going to, it's called nested loops in neuro-linguistic programming, which is based off of Milton Erickson and hypnosis. And everybody uses it now. Every announcer goes, and moving forward, and every politician moving forward means leave everything behind. Right. But in a nested loop, I'm going back to the story when I was working Sunday nights, I would uh, get off of work and walk across the bridge to Chihuahua Charlie's and hang out and, uh, and party on a Sunday night, you know, nice. <laughs> with, uh, with some of the people who aren't probably alive anymore. But, uh, you know, they, I get invited on trips and all this, you know, by rich uh, people there. Because, oh, El Clima, shock, shock. Knew, the broader. Knows Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Knew yeah. yeah. and what is, uh, uh, pronostico de Chuck. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> por la noche pasa la mente nublado y con vientos lejeros. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. He's giving them yeah. the weather right See, there. Yeah. He's speaking the language. Uh, yeah, every actually, language. Actually, yeah. por la noche despejado. He's, he's spoken yeah. in three languages yeah. on this podcast. Just so far, dude. Yeah, we're only, but, uh, we're only I, 30 minutes in. I habla uh, Spanglish, really. But I, I really <laughs> need to. But, you know, I have to watch P- El Pico at night to reruns. And, yeah. and I watch uh, novelas, La Fea. Right now, watching from the, the original one, which is better from Col- from Colombia, I think. <laughs> uh, the the Ugly Betty, mm-hmm. the original yeah. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I, I my mom, dude. Yeah. Because my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Mia's Mexican posa. mothers. Yeah, Mexican Me, and yeah. wives. Me, that's that's how they get all their character from, dude. Yeah. It's it's not like in the blood. It's from those novelas. No, and <laughs> and that's how they get that look too. That yeah. novella look. I'm like, telling you, like like laser eyes. The mom. Yeah, dude. My wife all or, the time. My yeah. Mind, it's mine too, man. Yeah. Oh no. Well, I think that's genetic in a Latino. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just you know they're born with that look. Like what? What are you gonna do? Like, I don't speak a word of Spanish at all. Yeah. But I hear one like Spanish thing come out of her mouth. Like I'm. Yeah. you know yeah yeah you know you're, <laughs> like, yeah you're like you're fucked yeah. Like, yeah. Even, even when they get their first boyfriend and he's talking to another woman you know yeah. she's got that look like yeah. you know uh uh Celos, celestina on el pico was a comedy celestina celestina, celestina. well I was really jealous her eyes would turn wet red and then she'd turn into a dude who was dressed as her but she would be like just freaking out and jealousy, <laughs> over, you know. Um, anyway, like a mad rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, even at the age of four or five, they're like, you know, Latinas are like, "Who's that bitch?" Yeah, yeah. 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 like uh, I don't know. For real, uh, it's yeah. like that's my cousin. Yeah, that's my. Cousin. <laughs> Yeah, it's my prima girl. Yeah. What are you talking about? I don't like her. Yeah. They're always your cousins. I don't like, oh yeah. yeah oh, so you're gonna tell me you yeah. got 42 cousins, <laughs> all females? Uh-huh. Chuck, I know you said at age 45. I don't think that ever stopped. <laughs> no, no, I don't think like at age 85. I think that's still there. Oh no, it's still there. <laughs> it's it's still- impressive. But they're the most passionate, most loving uh, oh. mind. She's a pastry chef, professional chef. Um, she's a, a, strong women. She's a, cr- a criminal profiler. Seriously, actually, uh, award-winning. I think all women journalist. Are women. Yeah, all, all women. 
boy, they turn into they, FBI. Damn, agents, damn, that, dude. damn that CSI. Dude. Yeah. Damn, you know. Like, uh, <laughs> like females, CSI learn from them. That's dude, yeah. dude, females will turn into literally like a criminal investigator on social media when there's like a girl that's talking to like one of the guys that they're with. They're like, like he said, who the fuck is that bitch? Yeah. And dude, they yeah. find out everything about them and in no less than like five weights. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. I yeah. and wait everything. And then, then they cruise slowly for a week by that bitch's home. <laughs> too, going, uh, I hope she comes out. I hope that, Hey bitch, you better stay in the house. <laughs> you know, but that's, anyway. Hey, that's how it is. Though. That's, how it that's goes. hilarious. But you know what? I love my wife. Oh, a lot of love. <laughs> a lot of love. I have to say. And, and again, I'm glad this is on video because we're going to have to show I am drinking water. Yeah. It's Where's spiked it? water, by and the yeah, way. She's already, asked, she's already asked me if I'm, if I'm talking about her right yeah. now. Yeah. Is she really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're psychic like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. My wife just sent me a message earlier before you came. She's uh -huh. like, make sure you don't get drunk while he's there. Oh, because of my rap problem. No, no, it's just because <laughs> no, she thinks no, no. I, we sound she, sloppy. Oh, yeah. She's <laughs> looking out for him and okay, telling him yeah. not to drink too much so you don't make See, yourself but they, look they like they do an look ass. out for you. Oh, yeah. But they, they do. do it in a different way. Like, comes off, like, really rude. Like, yeah. like I've been, I've been very slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been very slow. Well, but that's see, exactly the way she said it. She's like, dude, look, hey, you better not. Get yeah, and my, my German grandma, I love her, and I think she directed me to the current woman I'm with, my wife, huh. because she was that way. And she, you know, Germans are blunt and to the point because they think you're, they're helping you. Like, yeah. you know. It's a fault. Uh, Chuck, love. Chuck, you need to put down the, the, that sandwich. You're, you're fat. <laughs> you're fat. They would tell me you're fat. And, and I'm like, or we go in a restaurant and she go, oh, my God. Can you believe how gay the host is? And we're in middle school, and we're like, Grandma, no, you You're don't like, Grandma, say that. You gotta chill right. on you know, that. But and she'd say, Look at that fat man over there, and we're like, Oh no, Grandma, no. It's, a, it's but, his name's Chris. Chris, <laughs> oh, oh, don't give him a heart. Anyway, but so, um, but yeah, so she conditioned me for that, you yeah. know. And, but it's tough love. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that sounds just like that's my how mom. you build some tough skin. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it is what it is, man. And I'm like, you don't have to be that rude. Dude, you know? but imagine, it takes a tough man dude, to be with a lady. Imagine guy. growing up and your German, your German grandmother is just giving you the work all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. Like, just like, you're fat. Yeah. But, you look out of <laughs> shape. You need to straighten your ass up. Your breath smells like shit. Dude, I don't but, know what I would have done. I, I would have been like, hey, and, hey, this is America and Germany. And, 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 and the thing is, I was her favorite grandchild. Like, and that was her really, being nice. Yeah, yeah, that was her. But no, but it really conditioned me. So I had a tough skin. But, you know, one thing, you know, I would get beat up and teased. Uh, you know, uh, you know, bullying is so trendy, but I was bullied. And, you know, when you have a 14 millimeter overbite and the Bugs Bunny jokes and all that come out, you yeah. know, um, and I was telling my parents, reminding of the story, she goes, like, didn't your sister who was 16 months younger than me in grade school? I was like in sixth grade. And, you know, back then, back in, and my wife calls it the dinosaur age, <laughs> but um, back when I was in grade school, um, you get so mad, they'd say, oh, I choose you. That was the thing. I, we're going to go fight. And Jeez. then it was like advertised everywhere. And it was like a big MMA event. You know, <laughs> it was uh, like. Uh, uh, Meet in the back. They're yeah. going to throw down. I yeah. think in Lincoln for us, it was kind of like just a head nod. Yeah. It just <laughs> you like look a, at somebody and be like. Uh -huh. It's on, right? It's <laughs> and on. And then the word went around. And, like, and oh. then we would get away from the grade school, go down to the baseball field. And this was not a smart place to fight because there were goat heads. We call them goat heads. I don't know what you call them in Spanish down here, but they're the weeds that have the seeds that have the two devil's horns up that stick in your feet when you walk. Oh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so this guy had me down on the ground on these goat heads, and my sister took her metal lunchbox and just clocked. She goes, leave my brother alone, and she clocked the guy over the head, Damn. and he was delirious, and, and that ended the fight. Was hey, yeah. shout out to your sister. Yeah, there you go, oh, Lynn. Yeah. Linda in. Broder. It's that Russian in her. It's like, that's yeah. my job. Yeah. <laughs> it's the German in German. her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it, Russian? Yeah, yeah that's right. Russian. Dos Vidanya. Uh -huh. Hey, Nick, never mind on that beer. Cut <laughs> me off. <laughs> anyway, so you got a lot of questions. I'm a talking animal, so. I talk, you know, yeah, I this is what the all. show's about. Oh, thank you. So the, the question I, I did ask was. Got another if, water. Right if here. you could uh, 
just get into your time a little bit on like what happened at the end of your time with KTSM. Um, because yeah. like I said, there was a lot of rumors that, you know, you've heard the rumors. We oh, don't yeah. need to no, yeah. restate them. You know what we're talking yeah. about. And people, um, you guys have seen the internet, you know how yeah. harsh the internet But people want to know. And, and, and all honestly, like, um, we thought about it, but we were hesitant to oh, ask. No, no, no. Because like, we've never heard really much. No, and here's the thing. TV, I, um, like I told you before we were on the air, I had seven general managers and 18 news directors. News director is the newsroom manager. 18 of those and seven general managers in 23 years, four God. months. That tells you how tumultuous it was. One dude who came from San Antonio was like in a professional news station was like, uh, this place is so fucked up. I'm out. And he's, he's working at Costco right now because he was oh, like wow. i'm out of the interest industry and i see him stocking shelves and he's like man I'm, there was no way that place you know and i was told when i left lubbock to come here if you could stand tv stations run by people that do not know anything about tv and run it in a non-traditional way you'll be able to last many years and i did but man i i'm amazed now i look back how did i, I last because there were news directors that took me in and said and some of them are not too smart. General manager fill in uh, with the news director once took me in an office and said, hey, Chuck, um, nobody knows you. Nobody watches you. Nobody thinks you're accurate. So we're going to move you from the nighttime to the morning show. Then the, this acting general manager turns to the news director and goes, man, if we move Chuck to the morning show, maybe the ratings will go up. I'm like, you dumbass. Did you just hear what you said? Nobody watches me. Nobody knows me. Why in the hell Why would, would the, the ratings, ratings go, go up? Yeah. Anyway, so that's the kind of, uh, uh, you know, you that's heard of the men's with. society. We have the menso society down here. You know. <laughs> the menso. So, you know, um, <laughs> uh, the so yeah, menjos. Yeah, pinche uh, cabrones. Uh, and, and, so, and mentally, like, how do, you, how do you deal with that? I mean, well, it's abuse, really, every day. You know, the last news director I had, um, even the even the Catholic diocese wouldn't take her back as spokeswoman because uh, <laughs> wow, she was uh, La Diabla. She was just <laughs> evil. <laughs> she was evil, allegedly. Dude, when the, and, um, when the church tells you like we're hey, good, oh yeah. sorry, right? When the sorry. church says no, that's when you're yeah. going to hell. You know, when you can't even when she couldn't even dip, <laughs> dip her hand in holy water right there without it uh, boiling. Um, so anyway, she would go to women and say, hey. Are you pregnant or are you just fat? Hey. Uh, you know, and make them cry. Very rude. And, uh, you know, the last general manager I had allegedly, I saw him allegedly grab women's asses in front of me. And he had allegedly uh, been fired from 26 for not one, but three sexual harassment court settled uh, cases. I'm like, dude, and this is 1970s, here. 80s. Yeah. You know, women can't, you know, and it, and it was right around me too, too, where Hollywood, all oh, that yeah, stuff was going down. And so, um, but anyway, uh, they got rid of uh, the news director was also on Fox as a news director and a main anchor. And she wanted to be main anchor secretly. She tried out, got second place to this girl out of Chicago, Farron Franzak, who was amazing. She was a second city comedian. She was a Chicago Bulls cheerleader. Um, a Chicago Fire cheerleader, nice personality girl. People loved her. And uh, then they fired her, fired Bo Bagley, who had been there while well, they let him go. They let him say goodbye on the air. Uh, he'd been there 12 years as sports director. And then Don Guevara, who was our main anchor. And they were looking for ways. And this news director took me in the office and said, hey, Chuck, man, um, I'm trying to save your job. Now I know. And I tell people, never use the word try. And there was a guy who was a motivational speaker. I saw him trying to get me into a weekend seminar for 3,500 bucks, but he was speaking for free at the airport. And he says, some lady goes, I'm gonna try and open a restaurant in, in El Paso. He goes, you'll never do it. Because try is to fail with honor. So she said, oh, he's, I'm trying to save your job. So I already knew my days were numbered, right? But the general manager, the, the Pervo, allegedly, uh, uh, <laughs> she said uh, he wants boobs at night and a younger woman. And I said, well, I could get surgically a C or D cup 
but I would look a little funny, <laughs> you know, just like the, in, in Juarez, the, the clima chicas with dos frente frios coming at you, you know. Um, yeah, and they, you know they do that on purpose. Too. Oh, dude, definitely. Like, come and, on. And the, you, like, and they got the, 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 the chichis sticking out and the bumpies in the back sticking yeah. out right there. <laughs> like, have the you ever Malgas. seen, like, uh, the Brazilian, like, weather uh, or news women i'm like bro this is ridiculous no it's like, semi-porn sometimes. it's like it is it's like yeah. you guys are watching this only because of this chick. actually like, i saw i it. saw this meme once where um i guess there's like a storm going through mexico and then it was like this mexican older man giving the news the weather. <laughs> and then somebody said like when you see a man like this you know that this shit's serious oh yeah yeah because yeah, like, everybody else is well, out yeah and then you know they're they're talking about Trumpas on the Spanish. They're, they're numbering the cold fronts. What in the hell <laughs> difference does it make between cold front number 39 and cold front 59? <laughs> cold Who front gives a not? shit? It's a cold front. It's going to affect us for three days. Uh, oh, but hey, this, sound, just, this just sound. gave me an idea to do like a, um, like a review, like find those old videos or videos mm-hmm. of weather, other weather people and have, uh, uh, have Chuck give his... Chug, uh, yeah. Break it down. Break, break it, it down. down. <laughs> Say, you know, and then, you know, when you first start, and I did this too, but you have a crutch word that you use, and you can tell on these weather girls, they'll use the same crutch word. And over here, and over here, and over here, you got to vary it up. You say, in the northern tier of states, but see, they could only say over here because they don't even know geography. Right. If you told them to point out Kansas like, yeah, or Nebraska, like, they would be at the map for 20 minutes, yeah. 20 you know, Florida. and um, uh, now a lot of news anchors, they cannot write, they do not know geography, they do not um, know s- even how to enunciate words. I was in the commercial break helping news anchors enunciate English words, and they were from the U.S., and then one weather girl, bless her soul, very sweet. She's now working on Fox and Four. She got hired away, thankfully, from Channel Nine for her case, and and got like a fifteen thousand dollar year pay raise. But she asked me twice in one month, you know, hey Chuck, uh, again, what temperature is freezing? And you know, she went through El Paso School District, graduated from UTEP, great institution. But I'm like, first, you got to look it up on Google. Yeah. There's something called Google. It's called next, GTS. Next, next is. <laughs> If you're going to get into weather, you got to study it. And since then, she's a much, much better and, and all that. But my general manager uh, would be at parties and uh, drunk and hand a drink to a girl uh, who was a model and say, you're our new weekend weather girl. <laughs> and I would have what? to train them. Just like that. Dude. Yeah. Jesus. And I, you know, here I went through and then you had eight and a half years of college, it. two degrees. And then, you know. Uh, again, um, and women will watch other women to see what they're wearing and then to hate. Because you know, a woman sees another woman and within 10 seconds, <laughs> yeah, no, with 10 <laughs> seconds, it's either like, she's okay, or yeah, it's, it's either bitch, you know, yeah, yeah it's on. So um, anyway, but uh, mostly men watch the, um, weather girls but they've they've got them and then i was even told by the news director here at another station hey chuck you can apply we have two weather positions open but i'm going to tell you right now we're only going to hire a woman for both positions because we can uh, work them harder and pay them less she actually told me that i'm like no really i'm not even making that up i'm like really yeah i'm being honest with you um you know, we can pay because, um, and then she told me the other girl on the other station calls herself meteorologist. So you, a uh, chief meteorologist. So you couldn't call yourself chief if you got the chief job. And I'm like, I don't care. I'll call myself <laughs> El Jefe. <laughs> <laughs> El Jefe, the meteorologist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're coming up on 50 minutes here. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we get back, we're going to talk to Chuck a little bit more about, um, is uh like what he's doing now he's a social social meteorologist and then um we'll also get into a few other things and um we'll wrap up the podcast but for now let's go ahead and take a break and we will be right back 
All right, guys. So we are back conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast episode number 45, featuring Chuck DeBroder. Chuck, thank you once again. Hey, guys, thank you. Uh, make sure, guys, you guys uh, go follow us on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. You can like us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so you can see every time we post a video. Um, so, Chuck, we were talking about your time at KTSM. That's where you developed your longevity and kind of like where you were able to make yourself El Paso's uh, most known weatherman in my books. Uh, but eventually that time came to an end. No, wait, hold on. Yeah. You think about it. The only weatherman people know. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who's, who's, who's you know? the other? I, don't, I can't even think or yeah. picture any other weatherman. Well, there might be some somebody that's like what? really you know, old that's like, hey, yeah. back in the day, this was the guy. And, uh, you know what I mean? And he's a friend of mine, but he's like, I got good news. <laughs> I got bad news. <laughs> Your forecast is next. Doppler Dave. Doppler yeah, Dave. Doppler Dave. Dave. Yeah, he's a new one. He's been around yeah, a long time. Around. And then Robert Bettis, who I've worked with uh, for a while. Um, <laughs> Doppler Dave. And then uh, Sandra Diaz. He's been around. Okay. For a see, you see, there's, yeah. there's other weather yeah. people out there. I just prefer you know Chuck, I mean? all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Chuck. So tell us a little bit about how this all came to an end with KTSM. Uh, there was allegations that you might have been on air and that you might have been under the influence. Mm -hmm. uh, so go ahead and uh, clear the air. Let us know what happened. Well, and, uh, you know, they, they had said, uh, the news, news director told me the GM's trying to get rid of you. And every GM did try to get rid of me. I'll, I'll give a quick home show example. One GM cut off my name off of a promo photo. We were there signing autographs and he told a new weather guy who had never been had never done weather before hey watch this no one knows this this weather guy and you know he thinks he's all that and whatever and nobody knows so they walked around the home show with no name on the bottom of the photo and uh, everybody goes oh that's chuck de broder that's chuck de broder and so you. they did um surveys and they paid people the last one 50 bucks a person <laughs> to do you like this weather girl or this weather girl? This weather guy, do you know who this is? Uh, what do you think of them? You know, they surveyed of all the people on local TV. And when they came to me, I, I, every time they did this with four different companies in my career, I had a 96 to 98% full name recognition. It's called a Q rating, which is one of the highest in the country, according to the people who gave the survey. And every general manager wanted to fire me because they said, he doesn't look like a TV weatherman. Well, you know what? What? I don't. And, and that's what this community, everybody looks so different and everybody's different. And we accept people for who they are, what they're good at. not how they look yeah. and what they're good at. And I thought to myself, gee, okay. But uh, I, I never was fired. But I knew that it was coming down the road. And, um, you know, I'd gained, uh, I had open heart surgery. Long story short, they used all my own parts. Um, I have the blood pressure when I was 18, but they even made me go to work and my wife had to walk me from the weather center to the weather wall. I was out of breath and I was in congestive heart failure. And, um, so that's the type of thing TV is. But, um, so I had the flu. I'd lost eight pounds in two days. I shouldn't have been on the air. And, uh, they blamed a specific newscast. We think you were impaired because there were some friends in the back parking lot. Yeah, they were there to make sure I was okay to drive home because I was actually sick. I was throwing up. And uh, this is before COVID, but maybe it was COVID. I don't know. But um, <laughs> anyway, it was, 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 really was COVID-15. Yeah, you know. <laughs> COVID-13. <laughs> yeah. It, it was <laughs> experimental COVID. <laughs> but anyway, no, but I, I was, I did fine. It was my best news uh, weathercast or anything. But I did fine. And then you even said you looked up on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. There's and, a video on YouTube where um, if, you search, if, you, if you search Chuck D. Broder drunk on, on air. Uh -huh. And so I found it. Somebody had told me about it and I looked at it. And it's a short video. It's not too long. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty much just Chuck giving the, the, the weekly weather. Yeah. And there's, you, have, you see no impairment. You don't see him slurring his words or, or falling down or anything. No. I even forwarded it a few times. Yeah. And I was trying to read the comments. Like, is there like a certain time where yeah. he says something <laughs> wrong or something? No, and, nothing. And no. And so anyway, there's more. They, they real, were going to suspend fast, Chuck, yeah. before we get, mm -hmm. didn't mean to cut you off, but there's more impairment 
right now, here, right now, or on between this on this broadcast yeah. and anywhere that you know. No, and, for real, though, like, man, like man, and I, if, and if they were to drug test my TV station at any given moment, <laughs> there would be no workers there. You know, nobody the, would be there. The next day, they would have a job fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah they would. It, See, it, and, it, and I think, I think what 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 um kind of fueled this allegation was the fact that, like, like you said, you know, like. You wouldn't get impaired during the thing, but then after you would go and have a drink. And and like you said, everybody knows who Chuck D. Broder is. Oh you know? yeah. Everybody goes because I worked at the Prickly Elder with my with my buddy Alex. And um and I remember once Chuck was there, man, like he he had a crowd around him. Everybody wanted to buy Chuck a drink. Oh yeah. Know? And this was after work and yeah, yeah. And yeah. so um, you know, but anyway, um people would say when Cincinnati was happening the first time, way back and then now you know, it kind of <laughs> had a resurge a little yeah. bit. But they'd say, Chuck, Chuck, dude, I always see you at Sensi. I always see you out at Sensi. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, first, hold up. What does that say about you? If you always see me out, hey. then you're always at Sensi, yeah. right? So, but, you know, he got me shooketh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yo, Chuck, that was brilliant the way you yeah. did that. Good one. Yeah. Just, and, and, but then I'm a normal dude. I can go and have a couple beers after work. Yeah. And I love live music. I, I go to Neon Rose and Monarch and, and, and Prickly Outer and see DJs there and, and uh, uh, Bingo, Aunt Adam Dominguez, comedian, uh, local guy. See him host Bingo. Now he's at comedy clubs all over Vegas. I know uh, Nico from the uh, Buzz Adams Morning Show. Aja Jaman. Right. He, yeah, was, yeah. he was doing that as well. Yeah. And uh, they wanted me uh, to do it after. Been, I, like the week after I got, can't, I, I got fired after 23 years, four months over the phone. Wow. Talk about uh, no huevos. Come on, bro. Really? Yeah. Fire me in person. Yeah. Right. You know, well, it's like a slap in the face. I mean, yeah. you've put so much time and effort into yeah. your job there for so many years. And I mean, that's, yeah, but, you, but see, you know, everybody on TV, including the general manager who fired me and I can, his name's David Candelaria. He, you know, he got fired from 26, but it's a, it's insecurity. Yeah. It's a, a lack of huevos themselves. They're, they're actually, they feel like temporarily like a big man by putting you down by, oh, right. I have the power to fire him. Yeah, but, um, but they're only doing yeah. that to to hide their yeah their defects. Yeah, you know? and like, and so he thought I talked about him to corporate HR, and I was just telling him how toxic the atmosphere had become, and I didn't talk about the general manager, but he thought I talked about his previous station where there were three court settled sexual harassment cases. Well, you see, that's what allegedly that's, what, that's what's and, mind blowing you know, too. Like, mm -hmm. like him getting fired for that like did this news channel did not know about no that? no they didn't do their due diligence speaking of law um to and and their background to check this dude out so um yeah anyway and then he still operated the same way you know i'd sit there in the studio watching him hit a, a woman in the butt say oh my hand slipped sorry you know i'm like dude it's not 1970 <laughs> you know i'm not gonna lie it's happened yeah. to me yeah yeah all the time this guy was doing yeah. it all oh, the time. there's a fly in your ass <laughs> and then i thought you were gonna say that's how i met my wife <laughs> so i got in trouble <laughs> yeah Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble now. I mean, I'm right. just kidding, babe. Yeah, keep talking, dude. Love keep you. talking, Lisa. Yeah. Love you. Who was the bitch you hit in the ass? <laughs> you know, she's probably outside yeah, already. Yeah. Yes, you're digging yourself. A, a anyway, but hole. long story short, they they suspended me for uh, not doing a good broadcast, but they they didn't test me. They didn't do anything, and so I was like, okay. Then I get a phone call on a Wednesday. If they, they suspend me on a Monday. And because I called corporate HR, that's why I was fired. Because he was afraid I was talking about him. I didn't. Once they fired me, I called back up corporate okay. HR and I told them all about the atmosphere and about, you know. If I would have uh, known, I would have called too, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. And, and the thing I is, I would have called right after. I'm you. being on the real because, you know, a lot of people are fake and they, they hold things back and whatever. You know, go ahead and sue me, you know. Yeah. You, you can get all my debt. That's fine, you know, but uh, the thing is, um, uh, you've got to be happy with who you are. And I love doing TV weather. And that's why I still do Chuck's Backyard Weather. Yeah. Do you have a backyard here? Because I don't yeah. know if we're, we yeah. might do one here real quick before I head we home. Have, we have a backyard, Chuck, but it's, it's just dirt. 
But if, okay, if you're fine with that. Hey, that's a right. Hey, we'll do Friday. Hey, that's weather. El Paso. We are in El Paso. And I was going to say, it's very symbol, sim, uh, symbolic of El Paso because uh-huh. it's nothing but dirt. Just well, uh, half my backyard's dirt, too. So, you know. So, um, so now I love, uh, I love how you show uh, your neighbor's pool. <laughs> The pool of serenity. The pool of serenity. Next to the lawn of tranquility. Yes, there you go. I love it. And the trees of nobility. With the sky of humility. Hey, bro, he's rhyming right here. Bars. 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 (laughs) Chuck, we're going to make it rap album. Oh, yeah. I promise. It's going to be the coolest thing ever. Hey, you know, speaking on a podcast ain't too hard. You just got to join me in my backyard. Oh! Oh! With Misa and Chris and Nick right here. He, They're over there with the, not the Natty Light, but the Bud Light beer. Oh! <laughs> hey! And the crowd goes, oh, dude, that's shit the, wild. That's the best shit that has happened in 2020 <laughs> in my life. Yeah. Having chill yeah. bro. There you go. Hell Just yeah. like kind of freestyle. freestyle there. There love you go. But, I love it, dude. So anyway, um, my wife will fast forward. She was like, you know what? You don't need that fucking station. I told you, you don't need TV to be you. And your health is number one in your life. And when I was being walked to the weather wall in congestive heart failure, and none of the doctors here knew it, at Central Medical, the doctor there says, hey, it's a problem with your heart. None of the doctors I went to here said it was my heart. Then I was in Angel's Hospital in Juarez, and the number one cardiologist in Mexico was running around with his uh, residents, uh, student doctors, and said, oh, yeah, this guy's dying of congestive heart failure. And I had gained 100 pounds in water weight. My foot size tripled because my mitral valve stopped pumping water out of my heart. And it eventually blew the rest of the doors of the mitral valve. So the doctors shortened the hole. So so three like blown curtains in the wind doors. There's three doors to your mitral valve into one. And uh, because they use my own parts, I don't have to have open heart surgery every 10 years. But this was on it, what is? Yeah. Well, wow. no, I actually, I, I came back across here and had the oh, okay. open heart surgery here because my insurance company uh, with the TV station said they'd pay 50% of what they chose to pay in what is, or, you know, um, now the hospital here triple charged and double charged my insurance company overcharged $187,000 in my operation, which they caught, but my operation was just shy of a half a million bucks. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Nice. But uh, in Waters, it would have been uh, $28,000. And that was That's what I call the heart of yeah. gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, but again, the doctor here, the surgeon had more experience yeah. because they oh, yeah, more, yeah. more here. And, and it was a new surgery that had just been brought to El Paso seven years prior by him. So what year was this? Uh, this was, uh, it'll be eight years. Uh, well, it was eight years ago as of September 10th. So that oh, wow. was my anniversary eight years ago. And do you have any like health issues with that because no, of that or anything? No. You feel great? No. And, uh, I was taken like a quarter of like, um, a very light, uh, blood pressure medication when I was stressed at channel nine, because my when you get stressed, your blood pressure goes up. Now that I'm not there uh, in TV, where now I feel so sad for those kids because they're getting paid a third what the people were getting paid before in the same position, and they're doing six jobs. The weekend weather girl who just quit, and she's got a PR job now, but I trained her, Jessica. She was like uh, having to do, you know, they have to do what weekend weather, fill in morning, and then she was morning weather. She had to report after the morning show, edit her own reports, shoot her own reports, produce, fill in produce sometimes. Um, and they found out she was a Cowboys fan and she had to do fill in sports. And <laughs> she had worst. never done sports before. God, they put her on the yes. sports. Yeah. So, but Damn. they do all that. And then the new contracts from this company, Nextar, they make you sign saying you are available 365, 24 7 in any position at any of their 188 TV stations in the nation. So basically they own you yep. and uh, you're making, you know, you graduate from college and they'll pay you like 30 grand a year. But um, I mean, how are you going to pay your student loans? And one of the pluses now, they actually ask you in El Paso, so do you live with mom and dad? 
if you say yes, that's a plus to getting hired because you don't have to pay rent and living expenses. So that's crazy, huh? Yeah, they, wow. they actually inquire about that. They're like, mm. still at home? Yep. Good. All right, good. You're straight. <laughs> that's so, crazy. So anyway, but yeah, um, I'm a social media meteorologist, invented it. My wife does all the graphics. She made them look as good as TV. It and does then, look legit. Yeah, they do and look legit, also, dude. Then Poe Toyota, Gerald Miller, shout out to him number one car dealership in El Paso. Mm -hmm. They sold 578 vehicles last month, all time record. I mean, 578. Yeah, and, and if you go in there and say you're part of the Chuck DeBroder backyard crew, you know, you, you listen to Chuck or you know, Chuck, I want the Chuck DeBroder deal. They'll hook you up with even a better price. So if you guys um, are listening, you guys better be listening. Turn this mic on. I'll let Chuck explain one more time. This whole po. Toyota yeah, it's a deal, deal, man. Yeah, you go in there and say, I want the Chuck DeBroder deal. Tell your salesperson to go talk to Gerald Miller. He's the general sales manager and vice president of Poe. They also own El Paso Honda, but the discount applies for Poe because that's the one sponsoring for us. But man, a Toyota is a good vehicle. And, yeah, uh, you know, um, the CHR, the new Supra is badass. Uh, Tundra, Tacoma, <laughs> Forerunner, RAV4, you know, and... Uh, I, they even had a limited edition hybrid Avalon, which was kind of cool that they just sold. And, uh, um, but yeah, so you go in there and you get the hookup. Uh, a buddy of mine bought a used SUV and they, they give him like three G's off, you know? So they so. got to let them know that, that they know Chuck and they watch the backyard Mm -hmm. with you let them know about that Chuck. yeah every night uh weekday nights i do chuck's backyard weather we're gonna do the front yard weather here with <laughs> yeah. Misa, Chris, and, Nick. Yeah. and uh and um so i do that every evening and right around sunset so we're gonna uh, after we do this we'll we'll, we'll do at oh, least one here and then i go with the family of skunks that come into the backyard oh yeah and, i've and, seen that and, and they eat eight feet from me and they're so used to my voice over the last year Growing up from a baby, we called Pepe Le Pew, the one skunk, <laughs> and they loved uh, cheesy poofs, you know, as they yeah. call them in South Park. Uh, cheesy poofs. Cheesy poofs. <laughs> uh, the, the cheese balls. And, uh, man, they're on sale right now. Sam's Club, four ninety one, a big tub. Hey, big tub. guys, make donations. Yeah. You know, we don't ask for money, but we will ask yeah. for those. I'm going, cheesy I'm going there after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so uh, we have baby Lucas the Broder. Baby Lucas DeBroder, he's a Greckle, as smart as a parrot, and they imitate other birds. He's our mascot of the backyard weather. But I just get there, selfie, very organic. Me and a microphone, a selfie, and the, and the, and the cell phone. And we talk weather. We do the pool of serenity, motivational quotes, yeah, I love it. and uh, do all that. People watch. And you could, hear, you could see all this also yeah. on, on Facebook. Facebook Live. Uh, so I, do, I do YouTube first. We're up to 325,000 subscribers, something like that on YouTube. Dude, that we you got, just went up in, in the last yeah. few days. And, and, well, well, yeah, like I think it's like three or 320. I, I yeah, don't yeah. know. Um, and then 100 million views. In 23 months on YouTube, we're, up to, we're at 43,350 Facebook real people and 15 and a half thousand Instagram. And they're real people and they interact and they get, you know, Instagrammers. Oh, yeah. I think it's because they go by a different handle. Yeah. They, they yeah. just feel uninhibited. So they just say all kinds of shit. And yeah. Ask yeah. Me questions <laughs> and, and like Chuck for mayor. Now I'm running for oh, mayor. You know what? That's one thing I loved yeah. about that. You know, yeah. when I first started watching uh -huh. and Chuck trying to get mayor. in contact with you, I started watching your live backyard and, and, um, and I started seeing it's just hashtag, you know, Chuck, Chuck for, for mayor. mayor. And, and <laughs> yeah. And, and what we're doing, we're going to meet in the old Kmart parking lot on Montana across from Poe. It's now big lots, the big, big lots now. Right, right. And uh, I'm going to give away free Wiener Schnitzel chili cheese dogs hey. and free ice cold Kawamas of Natty Light or hey. Um, hey. Arizona green tea. Can you imagine the turnout? Yeah. Everybody, and you everybody, better have, you better be have a limit because Chris is going <laughs> to oh, empty oh, that place up. <laughs> and then, you know, forget uh, Oscar Leeser and, and D. Margo. I just want to run just to see them shit their pants. You yeah. know, just to, you know, <laughs> say, yes, hey, please. God, this Chuck DeBroder has got a name. He, he, might, he might win. Yo, and, they're, uh, they're like, yeah. Chuck DeBroder is giving out 
Kawamas. Yeah. At the K bar. And, yeah. and people fucking love it. <laughs> and I, you know, I still call it, they took, they, they dropped the Der Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. Um, they, they dropped the DR off of there. But, uh, that was the most like, uh, it's because, yeah, before it used to be called Der Wiener Schnitzel. Right? And now it's Wiener, Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzel. We schnitzel. We schnitzel, we schnitzel your arena. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yes, guys, uh, actually, um, go it's, follow it's our boy thing. Chuck yes, on yeah, Facebook. For real. Go check his live stream. Instagram, WX Chuck, Instagram, Chuck DeBurter, certified meteorologist. Facebook, we got Chuck DeBurter, oh, YouTube, man, Chuck DeBurter.com, Chuck DeBurter.org, Chuck DeBurter Business, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn with me. I don't know if it'll help you get a job, but uh, oh well. And you never know. Uh, Twitter and uh, you know, I gotta say, I gotta say, Chuck, um, one thing that I love about your live and all this is that you're interactive with the viewers and people that are messaging. Mm -hmm. I think that's one very big yeah. thing straight up. Um, straight up because when people look, you know, they think Chuck, you know, they, they, um, they, they think that you're not going to respond. That's what I thought yeah. as well, you know, and, and for you to always respond and, and take the time to and read. A lot of time I only have one contact in so I can see <laughs> the messages. And I'm like, so if you see me winking and, and going up close. When you, to, when you pull the selfie stick yeah. up. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah that's that's what I do. <laughs> but it is really damn tiny. Yeah, 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 it is, you have yeah. no, and I'm like, okay, who's but that's that? A, I, think, I think that's a very, very big thing. And I think you do a really good Thank job you. with that. Man. For sure. yeah, okay. Really so, Chuck, I know I want to ask you about this because I don't know any other weathermen, right? Okay. And sure. I remember in 2006, there was like some crazy flooding here in El Paso. Oh, oh like yeah. flooding that like I haven't seen since and I don't know if we'll ever see it again. But to the point where a fucking blockbuster got taken down. down. Yeah, I yeah. want to know what the fuck so, happened. Yeah, so, the water us, just came down the mountain. But number yeah, one, I grew up happened. in Denver where there's street drains. And there's no street drains in Lubbock. Now there is. The good old boys. Learned. Just to let you know how little there is to do in Lubbock when it rains – they have these playa lakes, which are so unhealthy. Just these lakes that hold the excess water in neighborhoods become infested with mosquitoes and lawn chemicals oh. and everything. But, oh, well, um, the water, <laughs> there's no street drains. So four feet of water is rushing like a river. And these good old boys in their pickup trucks are just, yeehaw, you know, driving yeah. through. And so here, I couldn't believe there was no street drains either. But in 2006, we had 10 inches of rain in West El Paso, Northeast El Paso in like 30 hours and we get 9.75 inches a year for a year we're the driest city in texas and where did all that come from uh, it came from one storm an up well actually multiple storms created by an upper level low pressure center that just parked over silver city area over the gila and just like a giant thunderstorm factory was producing instability which is allows clouds to go skyward. I'm not going to get too geeky here, but <laughs> I, I was about to start running this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds interesting. Okay, hey. but no, it has to do. We had plenty of hum humid air. We had dew points like in the 60s, which is like east of here in Lubbock, in Midland, in Dallas. You know where invisible water humidity is the power source for all storms. So we had that. We had the instability with the low. Just the perfect recipe to keep storms forming all day and all night and to see video of waterfalls coming off the utep mountain there by the sun bowl was just surreal and they put me on the air in the morning i was on the air for nine hours straight and oh, i God. and i talked about how i'm a talking animal and uh my friends uh, uh, after that I was quiet and they're like, Oh my God, Chuck finally talked. <laughs> he, he, talked he finally himself talked out. himself out, but they kept replacing the news anchors. But I was like, Hey, can I get a break? And no, because you know, you were the guy. And, at and that time. Now, if that happened again, there's not many weather people left no, that yeah. can talk about it for very long because they really don't know. Oh, isn't that nice? Uh, you know, there's flooding on this street, but why? You know, a lot of the weather people now can tell you what's going on, but they can't tell you why. Okay. Hey, would, so you, would you happen going. to know when was the time where it snowed the most? What day? Oh, uh, boy. It was uh, back in the 80s. There was uh, snow in May. And John Fawcett, who's the meteorologist in charge at the National Weather Service uh, of El Paso, which is located in Santa Teresa, New Mexico, the office, actually, he was on air 
on channel 13, which is now channel seven. But um, he had blown the forecast. He talks about it, but everybody pretty much did the weather service too. No one thought that there was going to be like two feet of snow in, in May 1st or something like two that. It was, a, it was my, like unbelievable. My mom yeah. actually told me, she was like, I remember sometime in May mm -hmm. where it snowed. So much. Yeah. It was like uh, 14 inches, you know? And so, um, yeah. So that was before my time, before I was here, but you know, we can have weather. My friends say, Chuck, why are you in El Paso? Well, I had a personal life because in Lubbock, in, three weeks into tornado season, it's 3.30 in the morning. You're waiting for the morning weather person. And you're going, okay, everybody in Mule Shoe, Texas, there's a tornado warning. Go to your tornado shelters. And it got to the point where the director is like, Chuck, you look like shit, man. Just voice over <laughs> because you look so tired, you yeah. know. And um, keeping a voice during all that was crazy during the, the floods. But, um, yeah, the damage was phenomenal. And then you guys remember the three mornings we were below zero. The freeze. And the, th and the freeze. freeze that killed yeah. a lot of palm trees. And, yep. and, and it busted a lot of pipes. pipes. My house actually yeah. flooded. Yeah. yeah like, I even had to skip school to like clean up all the water. Yeah. And, like, and uh, um, you know, I grew up in Colorado. So uh, Philip Mena, who is on NBC before the Today Show was a main anchor, but he was my main anchor. And Bo Bagley was stuck sideways in front of uh, St. Patrick's and in front of that bu budget motel. And, and <laughs> oh he had a two-wheel drive forerunner, but uh, not a, uh, not a four-wheel drive. So we pushed him into the budget motel and they charged him $35 for a night stay just to have his truck <laughs> parked there. I'm like, dude, this is rare. It doesn't happen in El Paso. And I'm sorry, you're not going to be that busy tonight, you know? Yeah. Um, and then there was, there was like some Fresa concert up at Don Haskins. <laughs> so <laughs> so we were, I haven't heard Fresa. In yeah, we, we were pushing these uh, Fresas up uh, <laughs> Mesa and they're like, oh, we got a, a super wow. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go see super, super, super wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know who it was uh, they were going to go see, but uh, Luis That's Miguel true. or something. But anyway, yeah. So we can have wacky weather here. But we, when we do get rain, it's a big deal. And we're headed into La Nina, which is a warmer and drier weather pattern for Colorado on down south. And all the northern tier of states are going to see snow, and we're going to probably see our fourth non-winter. But there Dude, will what did I say? There will be a dozen icy cold days, three days That's with it. I'm predicting three days with snow flurries. Two of those it's where the snow day. will actually stick to the ground, but it'll melt before noon. Oh, but, you know, you're hearing it first. Yeah, yeah, it's, is it's, it just it's, an El Paso chug. thing, uh -huh. or is it a Texas thing? Yeah. I live in San Antonio now, uh -huh. and like. Last winter was probably the first winter I spent over there. Uh -huh. And it was kind of like El Paso winter too, but it's mm -hmm. So, it's Chuck, I, I've mm -hmm. had this theory. It is. I've had this theory, and it's I've mentioned it on this yeah. podcast over and over. Like, I was like, El Paso's not even experiencing weather anymore. Or not weather, winter anymore. Because, like, it doesn't get that cold. Like, mm -hmm. it gets, like, maybe below freezing a few days. Like, not, not for, like, long no. periods of time. No, when I moved to <laughs> Lubbock and... Uh, uh, it was getting 55 in Lubbock. They're like, hey, it's cold. And I'm from Denver. They're, so I'm exactly. like, uh, 55 like, is, is, you know, it's cool, but it's not cold. Cold is, is, is 45 and below yeah, or maybe. Cold you know? is like yeah. 15 degrees under yeah, and yeah. like you have to fucking like really bundle the fuck up yeah, to but, go outside. Yeah, and we wouldn't say it was cold until it was like not even 45, it was no. like 40 or it's below. Like 40 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and in Denver, and then, you know, it sounds like a stories, you know, growing up as a kid, but my mom and dad would send me and other school districts would close down. We were, my mom and dad's house looks right at Red Rocks Amphitheater, the best outdoor nice. concert oh, venue yeah. in the world. But in, we're in the foothills of the mountains. There'd be a foot and a half of snow and I'd be walking to school and I'd have my, uh, my mom would put my sock, double socks with a, a Wonder Bread bag or a plastic bag with rubber bands on top dry. to keep it dry yep. and then put it in the shoe and the circulation was being cut off on my foot. I'm lucky I didn't have a doctor <laughs> saw off my foot. And then they would put, it into, we'd put it into over boots and then 
buckle the boots, barely buckle it. Like my mom and, and would have to put all her weight on the buckle and I'd be ready to go out in the snow. And we'd walk through this, uh, take a shortcut like kids do through uh, a field and we'd put one foot in, fine. Next foot would go in, fine. But then the last foot would come out with your shoe and boot still stuck in the oh, snow God. and you would plant your foot in the wonder bag and then the wonder bag would come out and you'd have to put your boot and shoe and everything back on <laughs> and, and struggles on uh, a kid and, anyway so yeah when they told me oh it's cold in Lubbock then it's even worse here you Shut know the hell yeah, I know people, what people, cold people, yeah, people <laughs> The, the presses are like, oh, my God, it's cold. And it's, it's, it's 59 <laughs> in the morning. Or, you know, e, e, it's fresh. It's fresh. <laughs> it's fresh. It's fresh in la mañana. It's, it's fresh. Yeah. Um, Chuck, real fast, do you believe in global warming, yes or no? Yes. Okay. I told you that, too. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, yeah. you're just reaffirming well, all these things. Well, and only, only because the world temperature goes up every year. Now, have we lived on the planet long enough to know whether or not we're going into another uh, not. heat wave or ice age? No. But um, it, are, is there global warming? Yes. Are we contributing to it? Not us as humans every day. We are, heating, we are heating up the ozone layer to 60,000 degrees Fahrenheit to change the pattern of the jet streams to control weather. Because can you imagine if we, if any country could control weather as a weapon of war, yeah. uh, you would save a lot of lives and troops and everything else. Uh, yeah, and I've had friends that are, it's compartmentalized, so they don't know what, they're just working on part of it. But yeah, it does. That's and, my and all, all of a sudden, yeah. next week for your podcast, there's going to be black SUVs showing up outside. <laughs> uh, we're looking for Chuck. We're looking for Chuck. Chuck. Browder. Hey, who we told you? Who told you guys we were controlling the weather? Who let that out on the yeah, yeah, bag? But no, but you know, the uh, Japanese, the Russians are all experimenting with. Uh, I mean, that, that could help, like, mm -hmm. like, um, like growing food. Oh, yeah, you know, no, like no. And that's what they said it's for. It's, or, it's, it's, it's to grow crops, to send rain where there's drought. Or, for example, like right now with all the wildfires mm -hmm. that are happening on the West Coast. Yeah. Like they could send rain. They there. can engineer rain and mm -hmm. be like, "Here, let me send you guys yeah. some fucking rain." That's insane. And then it'll, it'll, dude, it would literally solve the problem. No, and that's what, what I mean? that's what their public intent is for. Damn. But I'm just saying, I'm just giving a. I wish I had. I wish I had. Like with, with with everything else, like you can use it for good or you can use it for bad. Like mm -hmm. you said, in the yeah. war you know what I would have used? Like like if I had like Chuck's knowledge on weather, <laughs> like when I was younger, is like just get chicks. Oh, it's uh, like, yeah. do you think, hey, well, <laughs> girl, hey, can I get your number? Hey, how about if hey, tomorrow, if it rains? You, know, you want to kiss in the rain? Hey, and you know what? <laughs> how about meet me over here at 11 30 p.m.? When I, when I was all of like 143 pounds, 143 pounds wet when I started, when I came to El Paso. Chuck the buck. Yeah. And, Chuck the buck. and one, one of the producers, a real cute girl, Jennifer, she turned to the director and goes, is that voice coming out of that skinny little guy? You know, and but on <laughs> sun, Sundays, like, yes, on Sundays on Sunny ninety nine point nine, there was a woman DJ who happened to highlight at Prince Machiavelli's uh, uh, Gentlemen's Club off of uh, R. Executive R. there. R.I.P. To yeah, it's gone now, right? Yeah, R.I.P. Yep. But she would have her fellow coworkers show up scantily clad, and they would <laughs> they would invite me to Ase Tunas. And I would come walking in with three scantily clad professional dancers. And so that's where Chuck got the whole pimp. Um, yeah, the whole because, mantra came from that. And, and the thing is, I didn't hook up with any of the three, but it was just like an image thing, I yeah. guess. And there you go. Yeah, I mean, you'd see you walking around with all these girls. And first thing I think is like, I want to be like Chuck when I grow up. <laughs> mm -hmm. First thing I think. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, no, that just came to mind. I'm, I, I'm a talking animal. Go ahead and shoot. <laughs> all right. So, Chuck. Since you are not a native El Pasoan, but you are an established El Pasoan now. Mm -hmm. From the amount of time you spent here, we might as well say you're from El Paso. So yes. can you give the audience a few good places to eat here in El Paso? Wow. Okay. Um, anything um, you like. Anything. Okay. You, know, you don't from have Mexa, to say. From Mexa. Yeah. Used to be Paco's Tacos and they, they, they shut it down over by Caña Tio there over by the, the outlet malls. Okay. But uh, that's for the, the tripas. That's Ooh, the weird cool. <laughs> yeah. and, and my time. Right, this is my cheap toast. And, uh, but no, El Toro Bronco is good for uh -huh. Mexican food. Yes. I like that. Um, the one in Central, just up from the Dairy Cream. 
in the in the hood in the hood in the, 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 yeah where all the babies mamas yep. go you know? <laughs> and, uh, and uh that's good and uh, and you know you, you see all the babies daddies in disguise all types of tacos. You know, they're like damn i'm jonesing for some tacos el pastor <laughs> but i gotta put on this disguise <laughs> you know um anyway but uh yeah gosh there's some great restaurants um Hey, real quick, about. what do you think about steak pitos? Did you ever try steak pitos? Oh, I loved it. Oh! You didn't like it? <laughs> no, man. Well, well, I mean, it's because we were comparing steak pitos, chicos, tacos. Oh, oh okay. You okay. Know, but steak like, pitos, they had that secret spice. The, the secret sauce, yeah, not the sauce, the, the salt. Spot, it was the salt, yeah. it was the spice the that they put on The salt that they there. put on the fries was on the side, and you can salt your shit even more. You yeah. can salt your sandwich. You, yeah, it was Okay, great. so Misa, can you concede to the fact that now you're Misa the only one? Now Misa doesn't even like me anymore. Uh, like, oh, no, no. Chuck, yeah. we've had plenty of guests on here. Uh-huh. All of them are pro steak pitos. The no, only not guy, all not all of them, okay. like ninety percent of them. The okay. only person that is anti is sitting right here. Well, but I wouldn't Next go out of my way. Look, but if well, I was all I gotta in say, mall and, and then his one argument is like, why is there only one left now? Like, dude, get over it. I didn't even know there was one left. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So it's closed <laughs> now. A lot of them are closed. <laughs> so where, where, they weren't so it shitty. Why is it's it closed? It's on the east somewhere. I don't know where. It's on Treywood. It's on Treywood. No, oh, yeah, okay. that's there's, the only one open. Left. There's no more on the west side. Yeah, on the the east side. No, no. Wow. But that should wow. left Misa. Can you concede this argument, please? Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll still argue <laughs> on it <laughs> next. And, 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 and Chico's is good too, depending on which one you go to. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's how I've lost 22 pounds because I go to the wrong one. They're <laughs> <laughs> um, like, this shit isn't that good. Yeah, this is stuff. gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great weight loss program. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get ready to start wrapping up this podcast. But before we do that, Chuck, um, can you tell the people of El Paso why you love El Paso so much? Why you've decided to stay here and make it your home? Well, you know, the people are real and they're, they're nice and they'll tell you like my grandma back in the day, whether they like it or not, but they, they embraced me and I embraced the community. And yeah, you know, I'd be out and about sometimes after work and whatever, but people remember that. I made some lifetime connections with people and, uh, you know, how many pinchy widows do you know that go to, <laughs> they go to, hey. go to Wattis every, you know, and on, on the weekends. And I, I went during the novella, you know, when you had the, the, the federal police, the state police, the local police no, all riding all. around with uh, automatic weapons in the back, but that actually was a deterrent. And if you're not in the game and Wattis, Wattis is a lot safer than most mid and large American cities, because in those cities, it's next 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 yep. but if you're not in the game and what is they don't care they're yeah. not going to waste a bullet on you and then and you know so anyway i learned Especially a lot if you're chuck the and, yeah but then they're like oh shuck there you go mañana <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, uh, all right guys uh, love it. so let's love do it. our funniest scenes from the internet today in light of the presidential debate the other day guys which was terrible by the way we'll talk about that at another uh-huh. date um this is a live look outside the white house and by god it's bernie standards with the still chair guys right, <laughs> um, save the day you know it was like a wwe <laughs> match yeah, this is what they needed at and, the end. and you know chris wallace has been like he gave softballs to trump in interviews but then all the trump fans were like oh he was on biden's side and you know people are so passionate i'm i'm in the middle i'm in a i'm a moderate and i'm not gonna take either sides because you know my my german grandma even said and she was blunt and uh, she probably did bring up topics at parties but she could be the only one but you know you don't talk sex religion or politics and uh yeah but um with bernie sanders coming up there you know there's a lot of bernie supporters hey, still definitely and, and he'd be like uh gosh who would he be in uh, like rick flair uh, you know, old school <laughs> in, in the WWE. Yeah, 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 he would Woo! be like a like a slower, older version of Ric Flair, but yeah, he'd have know. that still chair so he could cause damage. Yeah, he could. Okay, next is Mises. Mises, what do we got? Oh, dude, this was a. This is a. <laughs> it's a meme, and it says, "Would you be a stay-at-home dad if your wife was making twelve million? <laughs> and then it's a picture of the guy <laughs> in lingerie. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 uh, the yeah. sugar like, mama. No experience. shit. No, no questions mamas. asked. <laughs> I love that. All right, Nick, you got a funniest scene for us? I don't know if you guys have seen American Pie. 
Uh-huh. Shark, have you seen American Pie? Yes, yeah. Jim. You, you're, you're familiar with Jim, Jim, Jim and, yeah. and the pie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> my plans. 2020. Uh, 2022. Oh, well, you, you know, <laughs> nailed it right on hey. the spot there, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you know, that apple pie is looking pretty good. <laughs> 2020 apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So before Chuck goes, let's ask him five random questions. Sure. We'll, we'll wrap this up. Question number one, Chuck, if you could live somebody else's life for a day, who would it be and why? Anybody. Wow. Wow. Gosh. Hmm. Mm -hmm Hmm. Anybody else's life, man. You know, you got to just be proud of who you are and live your life. But if I could live anybody else's life, like Elon Musk, we thought it'd be cool. Oh yeah. No, it it would be cool to be him or Jeff Bezos with all that cash. Imagine uh, just spending it or our rock star, you know, yeah, just hey. like a, you know, just a, being a, a, a popular rock, musician. Like, like an, Maybe like a Post Malone. Yeah. Like on a concert day though. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I wonder if he has that uh, voice modulator wherever he goes, you know, you Probably. Know, and he drives to the drive through. <laughs> you know, hey, I want a Whopper with cheese, <laughs> you know, and there we go. Okay. Question number two, would you rather be stranded at sea or in the desert? Wow, it's here in the desert. Those are both tough. Boy, uh, I, I, I chose one right away. Yeah, oh, desert. Desert. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I, I know how to eat those uh, tunas off the cacti. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd have to kill one of my... In the desert, you're, you're, you know, you're out there all alone. There's predators all around you. you know, but see, at the same time, in the desert, you have the ability to, like, and, and direct you, yourself at any direction. Yeah, and you, you, you see want. predators, except for at night in the desert and uh, it gets pretty cold at oh, night yep. but in the ocean man it gets pretty cold too and then you can't you have to see worry the predators about storms. day or night yeah. you can't see the predators down yep. below and then you have to worry about a sea storm and coming through and you're done you can't drink the, the seawater you go crazy yep yeah. uh, all right so go. i think overall the desert would desert. be a better place question number three when you place a new toilet paper roll in your bathroom is it going over or under over over, I think that's. Over. I think that's. I, I. I don't think I know somebody that does under. No, I think only people that are crazy, yeah. probably serial yeah. killers, <laughs> so, will do that. Yeah, <laughs> especially if it's the big fat rolls, and then you're pulling and it just breaks off. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it just has to stack yeah, them up. Coming from Chuck, it was like it was like going old school in Waters, where there'd be a lady in the men's room handing out the one sheet of toilet paper back in the day. <laughs> Wow. Going way that back. happened, really? Yeah, no, yeah. then you tipped her. But, <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine being a bathroom attendant? That's a rough job, man. Because yeah. way they fail. It would have been a bit of smelling. Sucia. Sucia. Okay, do you have a favorite celebrity crush, Chuck? Favorite celebrity crush? Jennifer Aniston is mine. Oh, wow. Salma Hayek. Oh, God. Jessica Alba. Did you guys see that new uh, one there? No. That, that hot wing challenge? Uh, Selena Gomez is pretty oh, hot. Yeah, looking hot go. again. Oh, yeah, she's pretty one. hot. Yep. But, I mean, uh, gosh, I don't know. Or maybe, what, like, uh, who was a babe back in the day that maybe we don't back know? Back in the day. Man, we're going way back. Oh, Marley, man, sh- we're talking the original Charlie's Angels when I was, like, hey. real young. See? Cheryl Ladd and Farrah Cheryl Fawcett. Ladd. There you go. Everybody you had go. Farrah Fawcett. Jacqueline Smith, yeah, she was okay. Yeah, the, the Fairland Fawcett uh, poster on your bedroom. The, yeah, with the, she there had the, go. the Mexican Blake next to her or behind her. And uh, and that's what, you know, I took a poll the other day. What is the animal or the picture on your Mexa blanket? On, and, and oh, I have a, oh, a, a wolf. Bear. Yeah, I have a wolf. I, I have I had a, a wolf. tiger. I had oh, a, a tiger. Yeah, we tiger's have lions. Good. We have lions and an elephant. We have one okay. too. Oh. Those are good. That's mm-hmm. a good variety. Okay, Chuck, last question before we wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can only have three apps installed on your smartphone, which apps are those going to be? Oh, it's got to be one weather app. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm a geek. We and, said, uh, I hope he says the weather and, app. And, and a motivational uh, like hey. quote okay. speaker you act, app. You can listen to all kinds of motivational things. And then your last one? And the last one is uh like a food network app but that would be torture wouldn't yeah, it yeah because uh, then no, what are you going to no, do order online no again? no i wouldn't do that uh some sort of learning app cuz you always you got to work out your mind Brain. as much as you do your body i say that every night at the end of the backyard weather 
which I, I might be stuck in the backyard and the, the door will be locked tonight by my... <laughs> Don't worry, Chuck, yeah, the, you can come the, over okay, here. Okay, good, good. explain. We'll, we'll show, uh, your, we'll show yeah. your, your wife. Okay, yeah, we'll see the... <laughs> and and she, uh, she'll be mad at me for uh, a week or so until you get this up on the on we'll, the YouTube. We'll, ex- we'll expedite this yeah, one for you. Okay, <laughs> All right. We got so, our producers working on it as we speak. They're already chopping yeah, the right first away. Half. Cool. Okay, right so away. guys, we're going to give our thoughts on the podcast real fast, and then we'll let our boy Chuck mm-hmm. go. Nick? Final thoughts on the podcast today. Uh, I think it was a great podcast. I mean, we, you're an El Paso icon, you know. I mean, I think all of us really, like, see you as the only weatherman that we know. And well, thank you. it was great to see you from another side, other mm-hmm. than being on the news and yep. seeing you do the weather, you know. And it, it was a great podcast. Like, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Misa, thoughts? I just want to say thank you, Chuck. Um, like I said, um, when, when we first were trying to throw out ideas and I threw out Chuck D. Broder, it was just kind of like, well, it's Chuck. Everybody knows Chuck. He's a busy man, you know, and Mm -hmm. shoot your shot. And I did, and I'm very glad, man, and and I appreciate you. Thank you very much, man. Cool. Um, I enjoyed doing it. Thank you. Chuck, final thoughts on today's podcast. Oh, I loved it, too. And I'm also a hypnotist. I got a couple openings. If if you used up for 15 years, a complete mind therapist. I have lightning hypnosis on social media right now, just rolling out that new brand name there. And, uh, I need a social media producer for that one too. But uh, yeah, I just, I got so much going on, but yeah, I help people help themselves change their subconscious and change their lives and becoming on smokers, lose weight, erase phobias, anxiety. So that's cool. That's my second passion. I admire that a lot from you, Chuck, that I've noticed, man, you always on the grind. You're always just moving forward. Yeah. And And I think I also can rank your YouTube video to number one, on uh, keywords that are like 80% populator, populated in like an hour or two. And I just ranked a girl, how to find someone to marry in New Delhi, India. <laughs> I ranked her number one on both the misspelling of New Delhi and the regular spelling within five days. Number one wow. in India. So I'm kind of geeky that way. Too. The power <laughs> of Chuck D. Brother, guys. So Thank algorithm you, Algorithm programming. Yes. Oh, yeah, there you go, Chuck. Cool. So... My final thoughts on the podcast, of course. Thank you again for being on. And yeah, me and Misa slid in your DMs, and we uh, thank you for that. <laughs> hey, and you know what? What I'll do is I'll have you on uh, Chuck's Backyard Weather one night next week if you want to swing by. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, sunset, definitely. And we'll have you up. And also, okay. we we're talking, guys, uh, for our fans out there, expect um, to have uh, a lot of Chuck's um, weather updates and stuff like that uh, going live so everybody could join and stuff. And just think about it, having Chuck – you know, very accurate, man, in the backyard. And that's just that, but you get some very good advice after. The, yeah, the Chuck DeBroder YouTube, um, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow, just type it in there, and we appreciate yeah. all the follows yeah. and likes and sub- subscriptions. Subscriptions are important in the YouTube world. So mm-hmm. thank you, Chuck, once again. Uh, had a great time. Thank you. Uh, thank YouTubers. you for giving us I haven't time. been paying attention too much over there. So it's okay. There you go. go. The camera yeah. loves you, Chuck. Hey, Don't worry you. about it. It's so, just the voice. Too. People should yeah. kind of hear yeah. your voice. Yeah. The yeah. Host Episode number 45, Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Make sure you guys go follow us on all social medias. Apple uh-huh. Podcast, guys, if you can, leave us a like and a review. What that does is help us get more and new listeners because it helps us get on the trending podcast board sure. so with all that being said guys chuck thank you one more thank time you. thank you nick chuck. thank you for producing us today that's my boy nick that's my boy Appreciate nick it. misa of course another good episode always, dude always. episode 45 conversing with chris and misa the podcast we are you, you, you.